Hi, my name is Kelvin Newman and welcome to the Brighton SEO podcast, where we share talks from one of the world's most popular search marketing conferences. The event started out as a few people meeting in an upstairs room of a pub and is now attended by over 3,000 people from all over the world. This episode is a recording of one of the speakers at a recent event. We're going to start off with Danny Rickman, who's going to talk about the small tweaks you need to be making to boost your organic organic ranking. So let's have a big hand for Danny and get things started. Uh, Microphone working? Can you hear me? Yeah, lovely. Okay. Uh, Good morning, everybody. My name is Danny Richman, um, and I'm going to be talking to you today about some of the small tweaks you can make uh, that can improve your ranking and your traffic and your conversions, which uh, at the end of the day is what we're all trying to achieve. Um, So I just want to tell you, I've been uh, working in SEO for uh, probably nearly 20 years now. Um, and uh, these days I mostly do sort of training and consultancy, but I remember my first ever SEO client um, nearly 20 years ago. They were a company um, that booked motivational speakers for events. So if you ever needed to book a motivational speaker, you went to this agency. And I went to go and have a chat with the CEO of this company, and I asked him, um, what's the objective that you have for this project? What are you trying to achieve? And he said to me, Danny, Our objective is to be number one on Google for motivational speakers. And I said to him, why is that the objective you've chosen for this project? And he said, because, Danny, we are the number one motivational speaking agency in the country. We should therefore be number one on Google for that term. Um, And there was no real consideration as to um, how many people were searching for that term, how achievable that would be to rank for on Google, how likely that would be to lead to conversions on the website. Um, And things haven't changed that much. I mean, in about 20 years, um, many businesses and clients you work with um, have kind of similar objectives. Um, And when you look at the industry itself, um, SEOs who are working in the industry Um, They seem to be largely obsessed with links and link building. It's kind of a big focus when you read lots of content that's happening online. Um, And if they're not talking about links, they're talking about making technical modifications on a website, improving crawlability and uh, improving speed and all these kind of things. Now, I am not saying that those things are not important. They are very important. But I do think that we perhaps uh, need to start thinking about some other things. There was a very interesting talk here at Brighton SEO last April by this chap, uh, Tom Kappa from Distilled, um, who said, at the top end, so he means on the first page of Google, user signals and factors that Google's algorithms associate with user signals are everything. Links may still be a big part of how you qualify for competition at the top end. So essentially what Tom is saying is that once your website is ranking on the first page of Google, user signals, user satisfaction, becomes a far more important factor. That's what keeps you there on page one. Um, And uh, somebody you probably know uh, fairly well, Rand Fishkin from Moz, said in a recent White Ball Friday, we're seeing more and more searches where the results that win aren't those with the most links the best anchor text, the best keyword targeting, or the highest authority. Instead, we're seeing sites and pages winning with content that does the best job answering the searcher's query. Um, And absolutely, this has been my experience as well. I've found that um, if you want to keep a page ranking on page one of Google, uh, Google are now seriously focused on search user satisfaction. Um, In fact, I don't know if you saw It was all over Twitter last week that uh, somebody from Google Brain actually now confirmed that these search user signals are part of their algorithm, a big part of their algorithm. So what I am suggesting is we need to be doing a little bit less search engine optimization and a a lot more search user optimization. Um, Now, normally, when people start thinking about search user optimization, uh, the most obvious place to start with that is with CRO, conversion rate optimization. So they start trying to improve the landing pages, making people more engaged when they come to the website. Absolutely a very valid exercise, something you should be doing. 
But when you stop and think about it, search user satisfaction does not start here on the landing page. Search user satisfaction starts here on the SERPs, on the search results pages. That's where we need to get people engaged first, because if they're not clicking on our listing, then we don't even have the opportunity to uh, convert them and keep them engaged on the website. Um, and so I'm wondering why um, we treat our listings and the snippets that we see in search results so differently from other forms of marketing and advertising. Um, this is a listing for the car insurance company, More Than, very well-known brand. And uh, this comes up on the first page of Google when you do a search for car insurance. Uh, our car insurance has a de facto five-star rating, comprehensive cover with 24-7 emergency assistance. Get a quote now. OK, it's absolutely fine. Um, <clears throat> but when you look at how car insurance companies advertise in other forms of media, uh, you often see something a little bit more like this. Um, this is a car insurance company, Ensegurus. Uh, bad things happen even to the finest cars. And this really is focused on the emotional goals of somebody who's looking for car insurance all around protection and safety and minimizing risk. Um, there was a lovely quote um, from uh, Professor Theodore Levitt of Harvard who said, people don't buy a quarter inch drill, they buy a quarter inch hole, uh, which I think is an absolutely wonderful quote. And I think it's something we need to apply to the way we present our pages on search engines. Um, so how can we help people achieve their goals when they do a search? That's primarily what they're trying to do. They're not, they're not really looking for products and services. They're trying to uh, solve their problems and achieve goals. Um, it's very clear if you have a look at the search listings, there is a big problem in this area. Let me show you a couple of examples here. So this is a search for injury lawyer. If you ever have an accident and you're looking for compensation and you need a lawyer that's going to help you with that, um, that's the kind of search term that people tend to use. Um, it's an extremely competitive search term. If you were to bid on this on Google AdWords, on pay-per-click, uh, the suggested bid for that term is £75.78 a click, which gives you some idea of what that, what the, what that click is worth to these companies here. Huge competition for this term. So let's have a look what's coming up on Google. Um, this one here, Duncan Lewis. I hope there's nobody here today from Duncan Lewis. Um, personal injury solicitors, personal injury lawyer in London and UK. Okay. Duncan Lewis, personal injury lawyers, London. Solicitors specializing in personal injury claims, road traffic accidents, accidents at work, accidents in a public place, travel accidents, fatal accidents. So in other words, you mean just like every single other personal injury lawyer. Um, I need to know why I would choose Duncan Lewis. Faced with all that choice, why them? That's what they should be telling me here on this page. Um, now, this listing uh, ranks in, OK, admittedly, it's not that high. It's down the bottom of page one. It's sitting in position nine. But it's got a click-through rate of 0.4%. The average click-through rate for a listing in position nine on Google should be around about 3.5%. So if they could just bring this up to the average click-through rate, we're talking about an uplift of 116 clicks a month. And by my broad estimates, that's around about £270,000 a year more income for this company. Um, another example, invoice factoring. I don't know if you know what invoice factoring is. If you have a business and you want to be paid quicker, you don't want to have to wait for your clients to pay their bills, you can use invoice factoring and get the money straight away. Um, if you want to bid on this term, £63.20 a click. Not cheap. Um, organic click would be even worth, worth even more than that. Um, here, uh, this website's coming up. Bibi Financial Services, invoice finance and factoring services. Invoice finance provides cash flow for your business by releasing value tied up in outstanding customer invoices. Let Bibi Financial Services show you how. Um, well, I probably already know the definition of invoice factoring if I've done that search. If I didn't know the definition of invoice factoring, I probably would have done a search for what is invoice factoring or definition invoice factoring. They need to tell me why I would choose Bibi Financial Services, not the meaning of invoice factoring. This gets a click-through rate of 2.3%, uh, sitting in position 3 on Google. The average for that position is 10%. Potential uplift of 100 clicks a month. 
around about nearly half a million pounds worth a year if they could bring this up to the average, by my calculation. And then one more, let's look at a slightly more local listing here, Locksmith London, um, but not cheap, £20.86 a click uh, for Locksmith London. Uh, here we have Emergency Locksmiths London. Um, home, Emergency Locksmiths London, Locksmith near me. One of our customers had tried three locksmiths that had advertised as 24-hour locksmiths. Why is that appearing in search? The reason is because they have no meta description at all on this page. So Google is just pulling this straight from the page, including the menu. Um, this uh, is sitting in position two on Google. It's got a click-through rate of 0.3%. The average for position two should be 14%. Um, potential uplift to 400 clicks a month, increased conversions of around 52,000 pounds a year, which I'm sure to a small business would be uh, a fairly substantial amount of money. Um, so, we've identified the problem, but we need to find a solution, and we start by trying to understand what is actually in the mind of a search engine user, what's going through our heads when we do a search on Google. Uh, a few things. First of all, I want to know whether this listing I'm looking at is going to help me achieve my end goal. Secondly, does this company appear to be credible and trustworthy? Three. What makes them different or better than others? What's their unique value proposition? And lastly, give me some idea of what I'm likely to see when I click on the page and come through to the listing here. Um, now, if we have a look here, uh, SEO training is what I do. And if you do a search on SEO training, um, this is uh, my listing that appears on Google, um, most of the time in number one organic position on Google. And I've really tried to apply this to the way that my listings are presented on Google. So, I mean, let's look at each one of those questions. Will they help me achieve my end goal? I know for a fact that when somebody goes to Google and does a search for an SEO training course, their end goal is not to go on an SEO training course. In fact, that's probably the last thing they want. <laughs> it's the means to an end. Uh, when somebody does that search, most people, what they're looking for is to try and improve their Google ranking. They want to be number one on Google. So by posing this question here, do you wish your Google ranking was here, this resonates with people. It attracts their eye because that's exactly why they did this search in the first place. Secondly, what makes them different or better than others? So my unique value proposition is that I only do private SEO training, so I make that very clear up front here. Um, are they credible? I include a few high-profile client names here in the listing. And then lastly, give them a bit of an idea of what they'll see when they click on the page. This listing, uh, I mean, this has been a process. It's not, it didn't come up with this overnight. Uh, a lot of testing here. This now has a click-through rate of 58%. Um, uh, so how do you find these opportunities? Um, so I'm going to give you a kind of fairly simple step-by-step -step process of a way of finding for any website how you can find these opportunities for improvement. Um, if you haven't already done so, I would strongly recommend that you download this free add-on for Google Sheets. It's called searchanalyticsforsheets.com. And it, what it does is it links up to your Google Search Console account. So it pulls all that data into um, a Google Sheet. Very easy to use, and it's free. Um, you download all your ranking data from Google Search Console. You put your website in there, and it will give you the page, the query, clicks, impressions, click-through rate, all the stuff that you'd see in Google Search Console, but pulls it all into a sheet. Um, personally, I then get it out of Google Sheets. I prefer to play around with this data in Excel. I just generally find it a little bit easier to use for this purpose. Um, and I add some lovely color formatting just to make it easier on the eye. Um, and then we start putting some filters on this data. In the position column, filter the, filter the data so we're only looking at uh, terms ranking on the first page of Google, so positions 1 to 10. That's where our best opportunities are going to lie. Then I filter out any branded terms. So from the query, I get rid of any brand names. We're probably not going to be able to improve those that much, branded searches. So get your company searches out of there. Um, Filter out, um, so we're only looking at those with impressions over a certain amount. We want to find those queries that are getting a decent number of searches. Now, how much you apply, the number you apply to this filter will really depend on your particular vertical or industry, um, but certainly I would say more than 10. Um, 
And then I put a filter on the click-through rate column to show me only those where the click-through rate is below 20%. Because um, that's where our greatest opportunities are going to lie, something that's getting a click-through rate below 20% on the first page. Um, and then I sort the whole table um, by largest impressions to smallest impressions that will show me the most search, uh, search for terms at the top. And then I apply a little color formatting to the click-through rate column so that all of the um, best opportunities appear in dark green and the weakest opportunities appear in red. And then you go through the list and you're looking for the queries that have the largest number of impressions and the, the worst click-through rate. And you identify those, improve your titles and meta descriptions on these pages, and those are your low-hanging fruit. They are your quickest wins. Um, if you want to compare your click-through rate to the average for any given position, this chart helps you to do that. So you can see that the average for a position one ranking term is around about 32% here, uh, and that declines as you come down the first page. Um, I want to show you some experiments uh, that I did uh, applying this formula to a couple of websites. Um, the search term trampoline mats, um, this was a client of mine actually, this was their old snippet, uh, buy quality replacement trampoline mats for round trampolines, suitable for all makes of trampolines, blah, 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 blah. And we tested it against this one here, trampoline mat broken, get the kids bouncing again with capital play. View our range of trampoline mats for every make, shape, and size of trampoline, expert advice, next day delivery, read reviews, and order securely online. We ran that, tested it against the old one for a couple of months, click-through rate went up 20.5%, went up three positions on Google, and 143 clicks more, more per month. Um, one more, plaster is near me. This is the Federation of Master Builders, the FMB. That was their old listing, find local plasterers, vetted Federation of Master Builder members who have been approved to join FMB. Changed it for this, looking for a vetted insured plaster in your area since 1941, the FMB inspects and vets our plasterers to make sure that you are 100% satisfied with their work. Use our free find a plasterer tool now. Up 16.1% click-through rate, up four positions on Google, and 113 more clicks a month. Um, and if you want to test out some ideas, if you're not sure what's going to work, then uh, why not use Google AdWords and rotate some ads with different ideas of titles and descriptions and see which one gets the best click-through rate before you apply it organically. Um, and then once you've seen what works, you can then apply that site-wide and get results that look a little bit like this, where we uh, double the traffic, uh, double the number of page views on the site. And all of this was achieved with no money spent on advertising, no link building, no new content other than the snippet, no keyword research, and no technical modifications to the website. Um, I think this gives you probably the best return on investment you can possibly get. Um, and I would just finish with urging you to optimize your websites for people and not just search engines. Um, thank you very much. This was originally recorded at a Brighton SEO conference. If you want to listen to more episodes or find out about the conference itself, you can do at brightonseo.com.